Um, well, how are you? I'm not too bad. That's good. Manic at the moment. But it's yes. Busy. Yes, well, it would be easy. You do this to yourself. I know. Getting <laughs> <laughs> for punishment. Yes, but congratulations. Thank you. Good to have you back. It feels good to be back, you know. Well, That's in this guise, time. yes. And uh, how has it been so far, as you say? It's a, it's a bit manic at the moment, but... Uh, it's been... Um, it's been great, really. I mean, it's been a lot of, lot of work and a lot of stress, but, you know, the, we've been doing... I mean, obviously, we're recording a new album, but we've been playing a lot. Mm. And it's been, you know, the audience reaction has been fantastic. Okay. Which is obviously very important. <laughs> it's been kind of lukewarm. I don't think we've, we've <laughs> carried on. Were you were you a bit worried that uh, you know that I mean I know you've had phenomenal uh, responses from the live shows that you were doing you know yeah. from last year, uh, but putting the album together were you sort of a, a, a little nervous? Oh. Hi, sorry about that. I don't know oh, what happened. Got cut off, though. Yes, it all just came to a grinding halt. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we were saying um, yes, were you uh, in putting the album out? Mm. Um, yeah, I think because obviously there's a, there's a lot of kind of um, expectations that people have. You know, you, you sort of don't want to disappoint them, and you don't want to you don't want to sort of. Um, I mean, some people treat it almost like it's a sort of sacred thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People get very precious about it. And so yeah, I suppose in some ways we were kind of nervous to see. Well, I mean, you know, just to see the, what the reaction to it was. But so far, people have kind of been very positive about it, particularly like the British press. I mean. People have, you know, have pre-released copies. It's obviously not released yet, but yes. been, the feedback we're getting has been incredibly positive. So, mm. I mean, obviously, we 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 wanted to make a, a record that we were happy with, but also that you know the older older fans would be happy with, and hopefully that we we attract some new fans. Yeah, I mean, it's a fine line that you tread, isn't it? I mean, because you've um, you're not a new band, and. Um, you know, as you say, trying to find some common ground where you can coach the old ones back and uh, hopefully build a new base as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the thing was that, you know, since we kind of stopped working back in the 80s, that Mark and I have both gone off and done our own things, and mm. we, which is great because we've both learned a hell of a lot and all that experience gets brought to, to you know, to the soft sell table, really. Mm. But I, I found that I kind of had to sit down and like kind of listen to it, the entire back catalogue and just kind of make some mental notes and think, well, there's got to be certain things that are kind of, that are still common, common to what we're doing now. It's, it's got to sound, it's got to sound like a soft sell record, but in the year 2002, mm. you know, because you could go so many different ways, but you know, there's been so, so much electronic music, you know, sure. particularly because of all the dance stuff and the techno stuff. And it's like, well, there'd be no point in us trying to be that I think it was we had to be kind of true to ourselves but we wanted you know that it sounded like a contemporary record and that's we'd be very conscious of that but it's it's very much a soft sell record of now I think mm -hmm. you know it's kind of if we hadn't disbanded I would I would hope that this would be the record we would be making anyway if, we, if we'd kind of made like another three or four albums in between mm -hmm. it's kind of where we're at now you know and there's, all, there's always kind of there's the sort of lyrical themes and musical themes that have always kind of run through our music, mm. you know, and it's, it, I think, we, you know, we've, we've tried, we've tried to kind of maintain that without sounding like we're just recycling ourselves. I think, you know, that the music has moved on. Yes. But there's certain things that make it very distinctly soft sell. Which know, is so the two of you. I mean, you can't really take that away. Of you know, course. Yeah. But it's, the, it's the way that, you know, it's the sound of Mark's voice and the, the, his lyrics and the, 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 the sort of, I think a lot of it is the sort of minimalness and the emptiness and some of the sounds I use. There's, there's certain things that just make it sound like us, you know. Mm, mm. I mean, I, I can't, I can't analyze it too deeply because I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably, I can't be objective enough about it. Do you no. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it must be, I mean, in a way, as you say, um, all the experience that you, you know, collectively gain, um, yeah, in the time that you weren't soft sell, in a way, you bring that all to the table. It must have been quite a process in a way of deciding, you know, what to bring, you know, and what to not. Exactly. I mean, I think from, Mark, you know, Mark has kind of said himself that the kind of lyrics that he would write for soft sell would, they'd kind of have to reflect the way both of us feel and, and, and it'd be subject matter that, even though I'm not the lyric writer, but it'd be subject matter that, w that we both kind of felt something about. I mean, I think Mark's own stuff is much more kind of, much more introvert and probably romantic and mm. stuff and it, it, it wouldn't be soft sell if he was kind of doing that sort of stuff. That's very much a Mark Arman thing. Yes. In, in the same way that I, w I wouldn't do a sort of out and out kind of 
to a dance track, like, say, with the grid, or I wouldn't mm. have just a sort of ambient track or something, but there'd be elements of that that'd be in it. Mm. You know, there's, there's certain sort of techniques, and you, you, kind of, you kind of mature as a kind of musician and stuff, and, and you, you kind of add that to it. You know, there, we, there's no point in us trying to make a record as if we were two 21-year-olds, because no. we're not. <laughs> no. we, would, we would just be kind of deceiving ourselves and deceiving the audience. Yeah, and then they would see right through it. You know, we, we, we have to make a record that is, this is who we are, and this is what, what we are, and what, what we're about, and, and this is now, you know. An honest record, yeah, yeah. Exactly, I think, well, yeah, I think that's one thing, we, we, we've always been honest, probably too honest sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's, been, it's led to our demise <laughs> several times. Although, you know, that could be argued, you see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think into the fact that, uh, you know, in 2002, you know, Soft Tail can come back because so much of the material that you wrote in the 80s um, is still um, referenced, is still so critical, and, you know, by comparison to certainly what was happening at the time, um, was leaps and bounds ahead of um, a lot of the other stuff that was happening. I, mean, I think a lot of that was because I don't think we ever really fitted in. So we, it was kind of almost, I mean, people said that we were new romantics, we were futurists, and it's only because we were around at that time. But I think, I think musically, we, we've always kind of, we've always kind of had like our own sort of, our own space, really. Mm. And which is maybe why people are kind of into what we're doing now. I think it's, you know, obviously there's people that they, they want to hear the, the old hits, but it's sure. great that you get, you know, we, we, we've made sure that we don't just play the old hits. There's, the, there's a co whole cross-section of the, you know, early stuff, stuff from albums, the hits, plus the new stuff. And, mm. it's, you know, it's, it's very important to us that it's, it's considered an, as, as an ongoing thing. It's not just a sort of retro thing. I think when we, when we kind of got the first reviews from our first live shows for kind of 17 years and people were saying it's, it's more like a rebirth and a re-energized re soft cell that, that's kind of what we wanted to hear that Brilliant. Kind of made us go let's mm. carry on rather than people going oh it's just some retro thing yeah we, we don't see it as a retro thing it's kind of it's sort of like it's kind of like unfinished business really it's like you know Mm. In the time just for, you know, we, we sort of drifted into it really because we've been, been sort of dabbling writing songs for about four years. Okay. On and off. Not really thinking about kind of soft cell getting back together. And then we kind of listened to sort of a few of these tunes back to get back to back and, you know, surprise, surprise, it sounded like soft cell. So we kind of tentatively started doing it under the kind of banner of soft cell, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then we got offered to play, to, well, to launch this new club in London called Ocean, okay. which kind of put us really, in, uh, in, you know, right, you know, you've got a deadline now, and <laughs> so it's kind of, we just thought this is a great opportunity, you know, they kind of offered us enough money that we could do a proper production, Brilliant. we just didn't want to just kind of limp back on stage, and it was just like really kind of average, it had to be like a, an event, Yes. and this was just a perfect opportunity, and we just thought, well, we can test it out, we can see, let's see what the reaction is, and yes. if, if it's not brilliant, or it's lukewarm, then we just say, well, it's a one-off event, mm. and, but uh, the way it worked out was that the crowd, went, I mean, we did like three nights, it was like sold out, and the crowd went mad, and the press went equally mad, and it was like, it looks like we're back in business. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, did, did you think it's perhaps got something to do with the fact that you, you were, not that you were indifferent to whether it worked or not, but you were in a place where, great if it did, but if it didn't, it, it didn't, you know, it, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. So, in a way, you were just able to do what you felt and, yeah, like we were saying earlier, um, keeping it honest and keeping it real, but sort of saying, well, yeah, if this works, great, but if it doesn't, it's fine too. I think I think that's it. That we, you know, we 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 didn't. It wasn't like everything depends on this. Mm. But it was. But we. I think we just got so kind of excited about it. It's like, well, you know, because we were just really excited about the kind of new material we're writing about, and it's also great to sort of play to play some of the old stuff. You know, mm. it's fantastic. To, you know, I mean, it's you know, when you kind of on there, you, I mean. Yeah, because Tainted Love, you know, we, we, we used to refuse to play it because we got so sick of it. And yeah. now we've kind of accepted that and you play it. And it's just, when you can actually see the audience response, particularly when we, if we do the long version, we go into Tainted Love, people just go absolutely ballistic. Yes. And it's, it's great just to see that reaction. Mm. And, you know, I think, I think that's it. If we kind of accepted what, what, what's ourselves about and who we are, mm. you know, and it's kind of, well, yeah, if, for people, we're not forcing anyone to like it. I hope, I hope they do, and I hope they like the new material. You mm. know? I know that lots of people like the old material to varying degrees and mm. stuff, but it's, we, we just see it as a sort of ongoing thing, and, you know, 
I, there's no no one's going to say, yeah, we're going to carry on doing it for another ten years. We sure. might this might this might be the last record, or we might we might do another one. We we'll just see how it goes, really. I, I, you know. Well, I mean, it's like, it, you could look at it from the point of view that you took a took a seventeen year sabbatical, and you know, it, it never really ended. It was, as you said, it was um, a regrouping exercise to go away and play and do some some other things and come back and you know, hopefully make a you know a critical record on you know, on the back of that. But yeah, and, ho and hopefully it is. And you know, if, if people like it, then that's great. I, I, you know, I hope they do. But I'm not going to sort of, you know, I, I'm not going to be sort of completely devastated if people don't like it. It's kind of because you, 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 you can't make people like your record. No. You know? But I, I, you know, I hope that, I hope that we made a good record. I, I, I don't know. It's, I'm too close to it. But you know, so I mean, so far the kind of the sort of press reaction has been really positive. So that that you know, I feel you know. I mean, you know, you could have a, you could have a sort of critically acclaimed record that, that no one buys. You just True. never know, do you? I mean, <laughs> True, which a lot of artists do suffer from, sadly. Well, exa exactly. I mean, there's no, there's, there's no guarantees in life, really. Mm. Is, it, is, it, is it strange in a way? I mean, obviously, you know, you've, uh, you've stayed within the business um, but um, over the years, but from the point of view that, um, you know, it's, it's directly you and it's, it's soft sell again. And, and when you reflect on, on how, you know, how, how the industry worked and how everything sort of pieced together then by comparison to now, um, you know, is it, uh, is, it, is it still a fun place to be? I think the kind of key thing with, with us was that there was no, uh, I don't think there was any way that we could have ever worked with a major label, I mm. think, because we, we just fell out so badly the last time we, we did as, as a duo and, mm. stuff, and, and that was why because we had major labels sniffing around and it was just they were just, just sort of saying things oh yeah we could change this and make it sound more like the Chemical Brothers or make it sound more like Daft Punk or something and we right. were, Mark and I just looked at each other and go this is not going to work and it's like let's find a label that gives us the artistic freedom and that you know is not going to be interfering and trying to change it, and, and you know they're, they're you know they're entitled to make comments if sure. they like something but, or but whatever. Respect it, yeah. But you know they actually trust us, and I think that with, with cooking vinyl, that's that's the way it's been. They've been they just kind of let us get on with it, and mm. we've you know hopefully delivered. I mean they they seem very happy with it and stuff, and it seems to be going it seems to be going well. But I think we, we're at that age where we can't really we're too old to be manipulated. <laughs> Couldn't be I thought we were younger because we were so naive and we didn't know the ins and outs of the business. Mm. You know, and you kind of allow yourself to be put into these situations. When you look back, you think, Christ, why on earth did I appear on that kids' TV show with a puppet? You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes. No, <laughs> There's no way we would appear on a TV show with a puppet. No, 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 no for one of a hundred reasons. But, no. exactly. but you know, in those days, you kind of get, you get sort of, yes, this would be great for the record. And you just kind of go along with it because you don't know, you, you don't even know that you, you, you can actually say no. Mm, yes. You well, know, you, you don't even realise that you're allowed to say no. Well, nobody you know, tells right? you that, do they? I exactly. Mean, and that, I think that's, that was why eventually we just fell out with the record company so badly. You know? Yeah. We just got so sick of it, and it's like we, we just reacted rather badly, I think. But I mean, that's the beauty of a you know of a label like Cooking Vinyl because it's, uh, I figure the way they see it is that. Um, you know what you're doing. You know, it's not like you're you know, you're, you're just starting out. So why mess with something that uh, has clearly worked for you know for, exactly. for more than two decades? I, I mean, they, they seem to have a very good sort of um, global operation without being a sort of kind of corporate global thing. But you know, I, I don't think you have to go through a sort of major co corporate operation because I think if you've got enough enough kind of smaller labels around the world, and, and the thing is that they're passionate about passionate about the music. Yes. That's really important to us. It's not. It's like you know, the sort of music business and the sort of majors. To me, it's 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 music with a small L and business with a capital B. Whereas yes. I think with I think with um with with some like cooking vinyl, I think maybe that the, it's both of them have got a, a capital. Do you know what I mean? That they yes. care about the music as much as they care about the business. But sure. It's, it's, a, it's balanced. To the point that I think cooking vinyl is now in a place where they've they've just enjoyed I think one of their most successful um, years since uh, since the label was created all those years ago, and I yeah. think it's because of that because they you know they've they've taken some a lot of artists I mean and I mean you, I'm sure you know who's on your roster. Mm. Um, I know yeah. some. I mean, I know like, there's Billy Bragg and Echo and the Bunnymen. I mean, mm. they've, they've got some very kind of credible things. That's fantastic. I mean, it's it's like a little safe haven for you know for music that would otherwise probably be totally bastardized, like you were saying, yeah. um, in in order to try and fulfil you know some A and R person's uh, you know 
idea of what music should sound like. I mean, to me, a lot of the music that comes out now it just sounds like that they don't even have an A&R department. They just have an accounting <laughs> department. <laughs> yes. And it's like, yeah, I think that will probably sell. And it's, you know what I mean? It, that, yes. it seems that the, the decisions seem to be made like that, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah more based on how many we're going to sell rather than how good's the music. And I think... You, you know, you have to kind of care a bit about the music. Yes. It's not, it's not just about, oh, we could sell, like, X million units of this. There's got to be some, you know... Well, I'm why would you sell them? Because it will, hopefully it would be good, and that would that, that should be the drive, not the fact that, you know, you could. It would, I mean, if it sells, I mean, if, it, if this record sells, you know, a couple of million, you're certainly not going to complain, but it should be on the basis that people bought into it because it was great, not because of some contrived it's, campaign. It's not going to be hyped to death and yes. spent, like, fortunes on the video. I mean... You know, I mean, I, I don't have any expectations. I've, I've got no idea, you know, who knows what could happen. It, it might be, it might sell kind of nothing, or it might sell loads. You, you never know. Mm, mm. I mean, even, even, even when you're with a major, that still yeah, happens, you know. Yeah, also. I mean, look at Michael Jackson, you know. <laughs> I wasn't going there, but yes. <laughs> but, but do, you know, do you know what I mean, though? I mean, even for someone who's an, an established artist like that, and his last album sold a million, which mm. I'd be delighted with, but for someone like Michael Jackson, that's a complete bomb. Yes. Yes, because you know, it, it, it cost him, you know, a couple more of those to to actually make, uh, yeah, to have the album exactly. see the light of day. Yeah, but that it seems to be happening to quite a lot of these sort of massive artists like Mariah Carey and mm. people. You know, it's, you know, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm not particularly sorry for them. I think no. they've got enough money anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know. But I mean, in, in 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 putting this album together, it, it was um, I'm, I'm sure um, a process that. Um, that you dictated the pace to as well. I mean, like you were saying, four years really um, in the making. Um, yeah, but I mean, that was very on and off, and it was, that was just kind of we were just kind of doing kind of demos and stuff. And mm. but we had the luxury of time, and we we weren't even thinking we were making an album while we were doing that. It was kind of, and then suddenly we had this kind of bunch of songs, and and I think that the way the way the album actually kind of sits, I think it works together. I think I think it kind of tells like a story in a way, the way it flows. You know, mm. I mean, somebody remarked. It's, 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 it's almost like a musical or something. I mean, we'd never thought of it in that no, way, but, no. but the way that the sort of songs work and, the, and, and where it goes and stuff, there is a sort of flow to it. Mm, mm, you know, which I, you know, I kind of, I kind of like that. If, if people kind of, kind of think that, that's great. But I think that's always been one of you know, Soft Cell's greatest. Um or what would you call it, um, trump cards, is the fact that the music has always had, you know, more than one obvious lay uh, l um, layer, rather. You know, you had, um, you know, obviously Mark on vocals, but there was there were le certainly levels to what you were doing, so you could appreciate the music, you know, in, in, in different ways at different mm -hmm. times, depending on your mood. And I think that certainly comes through, um, as you say, with this being a continuation. Of, uh, of what I mean, you were yeah, doing. I, I think technically it's probably the best thing we've done. But you know, other people are going to love other things for different reasons. I mean, I I, I, I know that technically it's it's better better than anything we've done. Obviously, because with the benefit of kind of experience and also the sort of technology that is available, that you can actually you can you can strive towards that sort of perfection. I mean, mm. which you, you you always are doing. I think as an artist, I mean, hopefully, that's, yeah, that's, that's what keeps you going. That you never. You never feel like you're quite perfected it, which is why you do another record, or you, if you're a mm. painter, you do another painter. There's, mm. there's always, and there's always those sort of recurring themes. Mm. You know, you, you, you kind of, you probably really, everybody's probably got maybe five songs or something, and you're just kind of rewriting those ideas because, because you, you know, it's very much you've got a certain amount of ideas which which makes that band. I think. Sure. You know, we wouldn't suddenly go off and do do a sort of, um, you know, kind of gangster rap tune because that's got nothing to do with what we're about. You no. Know, it's kind of, kind of knowing what you're about and, and just trying to communicate that as, as those those ideas as well as you can, really. And it must be great as well, you know, for the two of you to, to you know, release an album now and, and look at it from, you know, from the responses that you're getting and uh, from the live shows that uh, that what you what you're doing is um, is still relevant. I mean, that must be the biggest. I, I, th I think that yeah, I think the relevance is the key word. I mean, you know, it, you know, you can't you can't really tell if you if you're relevant or not. I think that's for other people to decide. Because sure. it's, it's it's like if if your music actually fits into someone's life, then it is relevant. You know, if there's a place for your music in their in their record collection and in their life, and they actually put it on and listen to it, then then it's relevant. I yeah. Think. 
Mm, and which is which is quite something. I mean, as you say, when you look out into the the vast landscape of music that has that is out there and that you know has has happened since the last Soft Cell album, and to come along and, and put a record out and and for it still to connect, um, you know, with with people who have you know have been exposed to you know a million different things, and to say mm-hmm. this is what we want to buy into, and, and and yes, it does translate. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that is the, that's the objective, really. If we can achieve that, I'll be delighted. Mm, mm. Well, you see, Soft Cell never made it to South Africa in the 80s, and um, we'd, we'd, we'd seriously like you to come down. I, I'm, at the moment, I don't, I don't know if there's any plans to. I mean, I've, no, I've, never, I've never been there. I mean, I, 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 know, I know a lot of people that have. I mean, it's, I, it's an extremely beautiful country, I mean. Well, to you play, you see, I mean, it, it, it would be good, you see, I mean, on the basis of, you know, all the things that you didn't do. Hello? Right, me again. We've got to <laughs> I suppose it's quite a long way, though, isn't it? Yes, so, it gets tired. It's, it's, it's kind of a miracle, really, that you can actually speak from such a distance. It is, too, and you don't have and to shout. there's no delay, either. No, no, it just, it's, I think quite it's... remarkable. But um, on the basis that you haven't been out to South Africa, um, I yeah. think you... Uh, uh, what the two of you should do is sit down and make a list of all the things that you that you didn't do uh, first time round, and uh, try and uh, hopefully we can coax you down to uh, to come and, and and see South Africa for you know first hand. Right. So where about where about in South Africa are you? In Cape Town. Oh right. Mm, mm, Excellent. Mm, mm, mm. Well, yeah, well, you you never know. You ne- <laughs> well, exactly. Been... You didn't think this would happen, did you? <laughs> Not exactly. You can, you can never tell what's going to happen. Right? You, know, you, you never know what's around the corner. <laughs> but, it, but it all certainly sounds um, great, David. And um, and uh, look forward to um, you know to to more. Um, Thank you. You you realise that you've set yourself up now. You know you've created an <laughs> expectation. <laughs> Well, I mean, if we can live up to people's expectations with the, with a new record after so long, then be, that'll be a major kind of goal for us. I think it'll be a triumph, you know. Mm. If, we, if we don't disappoint people, you know, that the people that kind of love the old records, if, if they're not disappointed, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be extremely happy with that. No, no, I, I think uh, certainly by by the sounds of it, uh, if they if they are disappointed, they don't get it. So uh, well, yeah, they don't get it. Then they, you know, they don't get it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can't help them. Nobody can. No. Exactly. <laughs> well, Fantastic. thank you, David. It's been a Thanks pleasure. Thanks very much. Thank you and good luck. Uh, bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.